This, this is Gas Up the Pacer, coast to coast sports on a quarter tank of gas. Gas Up the Pacer. Yeah, Gas Up the Pacer. We need quarter tank gas each way. It's only eight and a half hour ride, eight hour ride. Quarter tank of gas, get us there. When it comes to buying tickets for this show, you know what they say. You'll pay for the whole seat, but you'll only need the edge. Can I get the Pacer? Yeah, you know the Pacer bulletproof. The Pacer built by the same people that made uh, the president's cars. This is Gas Up the Pacer, coast to coast sports on a quarter tank of gas. What's up, everybody? This is Gas Up the Pacer, coast to coast sports on a quarter tank of gas. This, my friends, is our NFL slash football slash whatever the hell we want to talk about show. So I am Armando. If you're new, across from me is Lou. How are you doing, Lou? I'm doing great. Got my gray goose hat on. Come I in, noticed that. Coming in out of my regular uniform. Hey, this is the hat they gave me at Mirfield this year Wait. when they had the Great Goose Landing. <laughs> I said, I might not ever leave. They that's said, no, nice, you're getting up out of here. That's a nice hat. Oh, that real nice hat, too. Yeah, I yeah, dig it. We, I tried to drink all that Great Goose up <laughs> that day. They said, dude, bro, I got to go. Like it was free. I said, no, it ain't free. I mean, come on now. I mean, the hat, I, ain't, well, the hat ain't free. You no, drank, the hat was free. No, no it wasn't. You, I only, you, you, I only, you, you, pay, only drunk 10 Grey Gooses. At $17 a Grey Goose. That's all they were? <laughs> I got overcharged. I got overcharged. I was going to say, you drank enough Grey Goose in your life, they should get you a whole track suit yeah, with a hat. One of the plastic suits, too. <laughs> Sweat my ass off walking around. I'll tell you, it was funny, though. I went there and started went all Juju bees on them. Because I went with my dude. Give me a couple of Grey Goose and the white boy here going to pay for them. <laughs> the only black dude in the place. That almost caused a riot. Was called a ride. We was oh, at a golf a, tournament. What y'all expect? Uh, for those of you who are wondering, that's a great <laughs> old Eddie Murphy bit. Got some juju bees. <laughs> Wait, I ain't gonna drop. It. Yeah, I'm saying. Go, go I Google got you. it. I got you. You could Google, Google it. Google it. That's can, what it is. You can Google you know, it. It's, it's funny. It's good. Ha ha, funny. Ha ha, ha, ha funny, motherfucker. Ha, ha, very funny, motherfucker. <laughs> Oh, look, you're throwing stuff around and uh, knock the mic off. You all right? Everything good? I'm good. Right. Just getting my notes out with my phone. For those of you out there that would like to follow us on Twitter, although I have not, I've been meaning to post stuff, and I always go to post stuff. And I, I go through the, the Herm Edwards school of, of, <laughs> of posting, and I type out stuff yeah. that's funny to me, and then I read it, and I go, Man, that's not going to be funny to a lot of people. <laughs> it's going to be offensive to a whole lot of people, which is fine. But we don't no, want it to be too offensive. That's fine. If I was a, let's say I was a stand-up comedian, we were yeah. doing in this show. That's fine. That's part of my shtick. Because you can see and me. That's, exactly. And 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 I can tweet out stuff like that. And if people want to get outraged, they can. But like, I got I got a job and shit. Yeah. Like see, I can't that, be. Yeah, that was a problem. I can't. Like, I just can't be willy nilly throwing like, stuff it, out. Like there. we'll talk about that when we get to our uh, the next show when we do our awards. Yeah. When we talk about Antonio Brown preamp, he'll be my douche of the week. <laughs> but when they were showing the pictures of his feet, I was going to say, "Tell Toby quit running. Feet won't look like that." But I was going to tell you to post that. But I was like, "Nah, people might not receive that well." I don't think it would have been received. Not on Twitter. <laughs> Not on Twitter. Not on Twitter. Now, if you come to this show, you know expect to hear something. Not on Facebook. Not on Instagram. (laughs) But but when you come to this show, you know what to expect. So if I drop that, you go, this motherfucker acting crazy again this week. That's it. That's it. But on Twitter, you can't get that. No. I mean, it's a straight... Wait a minute. Now hey, listen, the Twitter is on us. 140 characters isn't long enough or whatever it is. Oh, I got freaking C. This yeah. goes back to our show last week. I got stuff playing on the laptop. Yeah. Goddamn CBS. You ever seen a grown man naked? <laughs> That's all it said to me. I don't see. I don't even know if the mic like picks that stuff up, but whatever. Um, but no, 140 characters or whatever it is now, 200 characters. It's it's. It's not enough characters to make a joke and then explain yourself. Yeah, it's a, yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, but if you would like to follow us on Twitter, uh, you could follow me at Junior D's. You could follow Lou at Lou underscore Willard. If you're watching on YouTube, that's across the bottom of the screen. We're good to go. And let's talk some football. Um, let's do it. Oh, by the way, if you want to subscribe to the YouTube, you can subscribe in the bottom right-hand corner. We have the subscribe button. Click the bell to get updates and stuff when we post things. Uh, or you can subscribe on iTunes or Stitcher or any other podcast catcher. And if you're listening on iTunes and Stitcher, 
leave us a review just just cuz yeah i just want to i just want to know scared of your review you are going to like it or you ain't i ain't scared really you going to love it or you going to hate it that's there, it there's not going to be a like or it's all right well this this we could save this for for a weekly awards and i'm sure it'll come up at some point in the future but the review culture you don't get many like really rave reviews. Like people don't write shit unless they either a don't like you or just yeah. want to troll. Yeah. So it's you're gonna get gangsters. Yeah, you're gonna you get you're gonna get a lot gangsters. more than that. So and honestly, I read any of the comments. I read all the comments. I don't let it. I don't take it personally, but I okay. read them all. I read them all. A lot of them make me laugh. Listen, if you're mean and funny, I'm good with that. Oh yeah, that's. That's what it I'm is. Absolutely good with that. If you're mean and funny, I'm good. Hey, and if you can get to Columbus, we'll have you on the show. Which don't be bitter. There you we'll go. We'll have you on the show. There you go. And then when you put the headset and microphone on, you start stuttering and stammering and presenting yeah. false facts. And and and, and then we'll mispro- talk about you. And mispronouncing people's names. Or anything that starts with R in my case. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. So let's start let's start the football talk. <laughs> Cause we got done with all of our predictions. Um we got done with with all of that. We went through every division. If you missed them, they're in our back catalog. I labeled them properly. Um, but we're done with all that. And now I wanted to do, I asked you yesterday, what the hell do you want to talk about? I mean, camps have yeah. started. So you got injuries that have popped up. You got Antonio Brown and his feet condition, which, by the way, God damn nasty. You nasty some of a bitch. <laughs> It looked like he tore tortilla chips off the bottom of his feet. Peeling onions. <laughs> but you have some injuries popping up. You have um, battles, quarterback battles, running back battles yeah. to see who's going to be the starter in camp. And, and it really cranks up, you know, Thursday. This first yeah. round of game start Thursday. Yep. You had the Hall of Fame game. You had the inductions. That was all nice. Glad to see some of them guys get in, like Ty, uh, Ty Law, Champ Bailey. You know those guys are more from my era when yeah. I was when I was playing. But you know, that, right now camp's really going to crank up Thursday. Exactly. I mean, it, it, it gets serious Thursday. Bull, and, bullets are live on TV Thursday. And before the uh, the games go out, because who knows how long it's going to take me to upload all this stuff onto everywhere I got to upload it. But hopefully, all these shows will be out before those games start. But I wanted to start with one because I know you're a big Josh Rosen fan, at least right now. Uh, Until he proved me wrong. So who do you think? Because right now they're saying that Josh Rosen is they're in a tight battle. All that means is Josh Rosen will be the starter at the beginning of the season. Period. Um, So with that with that thought in mind that Josh Rosen will start the season. I know we agree that because I wrote down here who will win more games, Rosen or Kyler Murray. Yeah. And I, I think we both agree that Rosen will win more games this season. Absolutely. Who will have the better stat line? That's different. I did not do any research on the stat line because I did research on the wins and losses. And the way I broke this down, I had some free time this week. <laughs> so the way I broke it down was I looked at Kyler Murray because that's who I believe in the least. So I broke it down, and I figured I have their schedule pulled up, and I broke it down. I think this is them. I broke it down in in five game sets, five first five games, middle six, last five, and the first five games I have Kyler Murray at best going two and three. It's Baltimore. I'm sorry, it's home against Detroit. They gotta win that if he's going. You gotta win yeah. that game. At Baltimore's a loss. Carolina home's a loss. Seattle home's a loss. You might win at Cincinnati. So I said two and three. The middle six games, I got them at one and five because here's the games. Home against Atlanta at the Giants at New Orleans. Home against San Fran at Tampa Bay. Home against San Fran. I only have them beating Tampa that's a, Bay. That's a rough go. I only have them getting Tampa Bay because, remember, I believe in the 49ers. Yes. So I don't have them beating them. Their last five, I have them 0 and 5. Home against the Rams. Home against the Steelers. Home against the Browns at Seattle at the Rams. They're three and thirteen. His numbers are his numbers will be inflated because they will be behind. Yes. So he'll get 150 garbage passing yards in the last quarter and a half of football. 
Yeah. So it on the flate of stats. So you really can't hold that against Rosen. No. Because the Dolphins won't but, be behind but, in their games But to like be that. perfectly honest, from, from last season, if you, if you look at – because that, that, that's the only thing I had to, to base what Rosen will do this year is off of what he did last yeah. year. So there's a couple of things with, with Josh Rosen. Um, one, he had a 55 this, – this was a stat line from last year on a really bad Cardinals team where he got lit up. But 55% completion, uh, almost 2,300 yards, 11 touchdowns, 14 interceptions. It was a 66.7 uh, rating. Don't. For, for as bad as the team was, I thought his stat line would be worse. It, they should have been worse. Um, I think he had the benefit from playing from behind in the yardage area. Yeah. Um, which I think Kyler Murray will have. Now... Josh Rosen, as a whole, offensively and defensively, he's on a better team. Absolutely. Now, my, even though Miami's you know rebuilding the rebuilding stage, but it's a better roster than Arizona has. Exactly. It's just top to bottom. It's a yeah. better roster. Um, so I, I think, I think Josh Rosen's stat line will be markedly better than than Kyler Murray's. And, I mean, listen, this is all you really need to know about Josh Rosen. So I was reading this story and anytime we're doing anything on, on a certain player, I'll go to that markets like newspaper or website or whatever, and try to read some stuff. So I'm reading and, and since I'm a Dolphins fan anyway, I was already reading on Josh Rosen. There is a story that comes out that Josh Rosen, not in high school, not in college and not last year with the Cardinals. He was never a, he never had the ability to change the play at the line of scrimmage. So he had zero ability to audible unless he looked to the sideline and they held up the cards or whatever the hell they did. So he didn't audible. He just did what they told him. Yeah. He never had to recognize the Mike linebacker. He never had to look at coverages. He never had to do any of that. He just knew where the receivers were going to go. There's no improvising. There's no nothing. You're running the route where the route goes, and that's it. That's it. And anybody that knows anything, especially about football in the NFL, there's a lot of improvising going on. Every if the, play. If the receiver sees the cornerback is shading in, then he can run the out. He can run the double move. And the well, quarterback. Call, a the, lot of times, a lot of these teams will call two plays in the huddle. Yeah. And the, the play they're running is dictated on the defense. Yes. So you have to see it. at the. Everybody has to see the same thing. The center will tell the line what defense it is. The receivers and the running back and quarterback are just looking at it. Yep. If you can't recognize it, you go sit down. Yes. Because you're going to be in the wrong play. He was never asked to do any of it, even with the Cardinals last season. So Miami's offensive coordinator and quarterback coach and all that, they've been working with him since he got to Miami, what, two months ago? Yeah. On, okay, well, where's where's our base level? Where, where are you at football IQ-wise? And he was down here. And he still had okay stats for a bad Cardinals team. Yeah. They said he is so much better at reading, reacting, you know, identifying the Mike linebacker, identifying uh, coverages, whether it's a zone, whether it's man, all that stuff. With that being said, if he's that quickly turning the corner on learning that stuff, it means, A, he's doing his work. And he's not fucking around. Well, and everywhere he's been, to me, it means they've dumbed him down. Yes. His Wonderlick score was great. His IQ was extremely high. Yep. Why are they dumbing him down? You just, you got to choose your college. But, yes. But then if the coach flipped the script, you stuck. You don't get to choose your NFL team. Yeah. So if they don't let you do anything, what what are you going to do? I guarantee you he's happier than hell that he's not in Arizona anymore. <laughs> hell yeah, he is. He's in just, South Beach. Just, just with, and not just because he's in South Beach. Well, I mean, that doesn't good start. that doesn't hurt. That's a good start. <laughs> but just because they're allowing him to do things and audible out of calls, you mean they're allowing him to play football? They're, they're allowing him to play the position that he actually plays. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. <laughs> so that's why I think that a Josh Rosen will, because from everything I've read, it's like, oh, you know, Ryan Fitzpatrick is doing so well. Listen, Ryan Fitzpatrick has won four games at every single team he's been at. And he's been he's, at like half the league. Yeah, he's not going to. Your quarterback is Rosen. He has plateaued. The things they're saying about him today are the things they were saying about him at the at, at, 
when he first got to Miami, when they first went to seven on sevens, it was the same things that they said about him ten years ago when well, he was on whatever team he was if on. If Rosen got hurt, missed four games, Fitzpatrick is your man. Yes, then absolutely. Then you stick Rosen back in, and then you keep on going. Absolutely. Because I broke their stuff down the same. They broke them down in the same thing to make it fair to Murray. I got them three and two, three and two through five games, which is Baltimore, New England, Dallas, the Chargers, and Washington. They'll beat Baltimore and they'll beat Washington. In the middle, I have them one and five because there's Buffalo, Pittsburgh, the Jets, the Colts, Buffalo, and Cleveland. Or I might have went one too many. Buffalo twice, yeah. Pittsburgh, Jets, Indianapolis. Mm-hmm. I got them beating the Jets at home. They could beat Buffalo at home too. And do you want a bold prediction for Miami this year? Yeah, they're six and ten. Bold as it get right there with them. <laughs> yeah. Now, I agree with you, and I think I had them at 6 and 10. I had them at 7 and 9, but um, then when I really broke it down, I got them at 6 and 10. Here's a bold prediction. Miami beats everybody in the AFC at least once. AFC East? In the AFC East. My bad. Oh, that's not a bold prediction. You know they're going to split with New England. You don't know that. I've been watching it. They destroy them every year. They play them at home except for the Hail Mary last year. Yeah, exactly. I'm just saying that, that, the team isn't very good. If it, the, here, Here's where I would disagree with you. I'm not sure they're going to beat Buffalo because I'm high on Buffalo too. If they don't beat one of the teams, it'll be Buffalo. I'm high on Buffalo, but there's, there's a, a, a kink in the armor. Oh, there's a big kink. And – their running back position, I know they got Shady. And it's Shady, real Shady. But Shady, A, had all kinds of shit going on. It's real Shady. Yeah. But he also had the worst season of his career last year. Yeah. If they don't answer the questions at running back, and if you go to uh, CBS Sports and you just go to, like, the, the NFL area – there's a story that I think it says uh, McCoy won't play Thursday, uh, opening the door for other QBs. It's all about the whole Bills. No, that's that's the offense. Washington. Or no, that, yeah, 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 that's the wrong order. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I know what you're I talking read, about. I read though. the other one. Yep. But it said, uh, where is it? I just scrolled right by it. It basically just said that oh, the Buffalo Bills, Lashawn McCoy. I've been told I'm the guy. At the end of the day, they've upgraded that roster. When when you got to answer that question, yeah, you're not the guy. You're you're you yeah. might be the guy today. Yeah, you're not the guy. But you're not you're not the guy long term. They have yeah. questions in the backfield there that Absolutely. That, that, that need answered. Um, and I don't think Josh Allen. I do think Josh Allen is good. I don't think he's ready yet to shoulder the whole offense. No, 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 no. But that's why they got him. And that's just because he's I, young. And, and I hate to say it, but they got him some possession receivers. But And I could call them possession receivers because they're not all white. A couple of them are black. <laughs> because you know how you know how the league is, man. You know how people are. I hear you. Oh, they possession receivers. Cole Beasley, a possession receiver. Man, whatever. Uh, the, the Switzer from go Pittsburgh, watch, possession go receiver. Watch, go watch the NFL Top 100 on the NFL Network. And when Adam Thielen's name comes up, because he actually came up pretty high in the Top 100. Yeah. Um, watch all the players talking about him try to dance around that controversial topic that he's not a possession because receiver. he's not. No, he's not. He's a he's good, a damn good wide he's a receiver. Good wide receiver. Simple as that. I just thought it was funny to watch a bunch of guys try to dance around because they know they're gonna get asked about that <laughs> bullshit, <laughs> and they know it's wrong. It's wrong. Listen, you can either play football or you can't. That's it. At it's the not, end of the day. It's not that hard. Yep. At not the end of the day, that's all it is. I mean, the game is hard, but <laughs> to figure that out is not hard. Yep. But I just think Rosen will be the better long-term quarterback. I think so, too. I mean, I just. And it's it's definitely going to be this year will definitely be now Kyler Murray. I thought Kyler Murray was taller. He's oh, no. only five. He's listed as 5'10". Well, that's what his cleats on. He's five nine. Yeah, you put him in his bare feet. Yeah, but he's not playing in his bare feet, so he's five ten because he'll have his cleats on. Yeah, but at the end of the day, he's the same height as the average American male. Yes, five nine, 
Weight not, 185. Google not, it. It's the same. It's, he's that's not, the average American male. He's not the, the size of the average American quarterback, though. <laughs> no. No, he's not. And he's also not surrounded with Michael Thomas and Alva Kamara and all this, all, you know, all this other stuff. Yes. You know, he's not catching you. Fitzgerald in his prime. Yep. No, I hear you. So, well, let me let me ask you this, since we're on the topic of quarterbacks, and uh, the whole uh, Colt McCoy won't play Thursday. I actually left Colt McCoy off of <laughs> off of this next question. As you should have. <laughs> Who's going to start at QB for Washington this season? Case they have, Keenum. They have Case Keenum and, and Haskins. Case Keenum because John Gruden. I apologize. Jay Gruden is playing for his job. So Case Keenum is starting because here's the schedule. I told you I have free time. I know. At Philadelphia, home against Dallas, home against Chicago, at the Giants, home against New England, at Miami, home against San Fran, at Minnesota, at Buffalo, bye week. Those are your first nine games. He's going to see if Case Keenum got anything in him to save his job. Not Case Keenum's job, the coach's job. Yes. And if he doesn't, he's going to say to hell with it. I'm going to try to go out with a flurry. I'm going to take my bye a week to get um, Haskins ready. And then he gets the the luxury of having back-to-back home games off of a bye yep. against the Jets and Detroit. Yes. Well, That is exactly that's, what they – and, that, and that's not, and not that's, what I would do, and that's but perfect. that's what they're going to do. And that's – the way you described it is absolutely that's perfect. That's exactly what's going to happen. I couldn't agree more. Because here's the thing. At the end of the day – Case Keenum, as of today, whatever today is, August 7th, gives the Washington Redskins the best chance to win right now. Absolutely. And even though Haskins is the future, and I think he's a great quarterback, and I, and I think he'll, he'll put up numbers. He'll be there 15 years. And, and he'll be there. Um, he's just not ready yet. And, and, yeah. and we've talked about this before. When you have a young quarterback like Haskins, and this is what they should do, what you said – is what they should do. What they should do. Because this is a balancing act. Like with um, the head coach at the Cardinals right now. Oh, um, Jesus. I was yeah. going to say Kyler Murray, but Kyler Murray about to cost <laughs> him his job. is Cliff Kingsbury. Cliff Kingsbury. With Kingsbury, he's brand new. He could start Kyler Murray right out the gate. He's got nothing to worry about until the end of the year. Okay? He's got at least this yeah. year to, to keep his job. With... With Gruden, Gruden doesn't have that luxury. He's walking the tightrope right now. So he can't just say, well, we're going to throw Haskins in there. We're, you know, let's let trial by fire. No, he's going to want to win some games. He has to. Because if he doesn't, he gone. Yeah. So I, yeah, I think you're right. I think Haskins does start, or uh, Keenum does start. And at the end of the day, after that, because that bye week's what, week 10? Week uh, 10, yeah. Yeah, you got seven games after that bye week. Seven games. There you go. And you get and you th- can th- see his he- first three games at home against the Jets, at home against Detroit, at Carolina. Haskins will start out three and zero. Oh. He could because Carolina will be out by week thirteen. They're they're, I- they're they're done by week thirteen. Then it gets real for him at Green Bay, Philly. Then you get the Giants, but again, then you get you, at Dallas. You want the trial by fire, but you want to ease him into it, and that's the yes, best way to that's ease the best him. Best way to ease him into it. Absolutely. You start him out at the beginning of the year. I mean, ultimately, shit, good luck, kid. Ultimately, you know, any coach you, you get hired, you get fired. But any coach would sit that rookie quarterback and just say, you know what? Here's a clipboard, man. Let's learn. Let's learn together. Let's grow together. And next year, you're my guy. Yep. Jay Gruden doesn't have but, that luxury though. A lot of coaches that have these young, good quarterbacks don't because that's how they got the young, good quarterback because they they were at the top of the draft. Yep. <laughs> so, and Jay Gruden's been the quarterback for a couple of years or, yeah, or uh, coach for a couple of exactly. years. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So and here's Your the in trouble. Here's, <laughs> if they don't if they don't at least go eight and eight this year, he's gone. Bye bye now. They have to go eight. Thank and eight you and drive because through. If you go eight and eight, you can at least lean on the fact. That hey, listen, Haskins is learning. Next year he's going to be better. Haskins is learning. I didn't have Alex Smith. I mean, what? Yeah. Jesus Christ! My yeah. running back coming off a torn ACL, then a pulled hamstring. Exactly. So you can actually go through and and give your reasons as to why you should keep your job in eight and eight. I think that's that's his that's his mark. With that's that it. schedule, that schedule is rough. Yes, I, I think he he needs to be at eight and eight. 
And then with all this stuff about Todd Gurley's knee, there, there's been reporters asking him about it every day, asking McVay about it every yeah. day. They've said it's a, I mean, Todd McVay, um, it's not Todd McVay. Is it? It's all right. That's all right. Whatever. Hey, you can comment below that I don't know the head coach of the Rams name. Sean McVay. Uh, Sean McVay. There you go. <laughs> so. I was just going to let you call him Todd. <laughs> he can't whoop you. Shit, shit. We called the Houston Texans coach Bill Bradley for. Like, I still do. <laughs> and I still call Derek Carr by his brother's name, David. <laughs> so I wasn't going to sit here and correct you. That's all right. I appreciate that. <laughs> Absolutely. I appreciate that. But Todd Gurley came out and. They asked him about his knee again this week, and he said, you know what, man? You guys are putting too much negativity out in the universe on my knee. Like, you're, you're if, basically, he said in, in a roundabout way, if I hurt my knee, it's because you guys have been asking all these questions. <laughs> but my question is, does Todd Gurley's knee last the whole season? Yeah. He's fine. You think? I think he's fine. That, what people don't understand is that when he got hurt, the timing was just bad. There was no getting him fi- getting it fixed and bringing him back before that season ended. But he hasn't really had it fixed, has he? No. Well, he's had 10 months off. That's how he's had it fixed. He's been off for the last 10 months. So depending on what was wrong with it, if it was a strain, how do you fix a strain? You rest it. If it was torn cartilage, you can rest that and let it heal up. But you weren't going to heal it during the season. Pace was oh, too no, fast. No, absolutely not. Pace, he'll, he'll be. I think he'll be fine. Because as much money as the, as I know that I know we're not supposed to call them owners. Uh, if you're sensitive, turn the show off <laughs> for crying out loud. But I know you're not supposed to call them owners. But as the owner of that team, you know what's wrong with his knee, because that doctor you signed his check too. What's wrong with his knee? If it required a medical procedure. They would have had it done in the offseason. You know what? I would agree with you, but they said the same thing with Ryan Tannehill two years ago. And they said they opted Ryan to not Tannehill have Ryan Tannehill is not a running back. No, he's not. And but you did not give him all that money. No, 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 we did not. Or they did not. We, they, whatever. I own a bunch of Dolphins gear. I own no, stock Absolutely. The team. <laughs> but you're you're absolutely right. But they're all human, man. Just saying. They're all just they're all human. And they, they, they can they make view, mistakes. Absolutely. And when I see the stuff like with Ryan Tannehill, because Ryan when Ryan Tannehill hurt his knee, that's the franchise quarterback right there. In their mind. Yes. In their mind, in the fans' mind, in in his mind, he was the franchise. And when he went down, I mean, he took them to the playoffs essentially. Yeah. But when he went down right before the playoffs, what, two, three weeks before the playoffs start, they said, oh, shit, well, let's just let's not play him. And I understood that. And then they were like, ah, oh, you know, it's not too bad. It's, you know, we could rest him and he doesn't need surgery and yada, yada. Which and then is he ridiculous gets, because he does run the ball. And then, he, and then he blows out his knee in, in training camp. But, so, But Ty Gurley was an MVP candidate. Yes. And a guy that – could yeah, potentially lead for you to anybody, the Super Bowl. For anybody out there listening, I am not comparing Ryan Tannehill no, no, no. to Todd I'm Gurley. Saying, <laughs> I'm saying the thought process from the ownership standpoint. Yeah, no, no, no. Dealing absolutely. with two different positions, yep. this guy can make or break my Super Bowl. Yes. A quarterback can as well. If he plays, if he plays in that Super Bowl, they win they that win Super Bowl. The they win yeah, that Super Bowl. They win Bowl. the game, yeah. So the, uh, the other two questions I had – and I know they don't hold much weight on this on this show, but any predictions on who wins it on the, who wins the rushing title, or who wins the passing title this year? Absolutely, because I told you I had free time. Yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you, Lou. Did you have free time? Uh, just a little bit. Just a little <laughs> bit, brother. I went off the cuff. It's easy to pick Zeke or Kamara. Well, no Saints going to do it because they spread the ball too much. Yeah. I'm going Christian McCaffrey. Nobody expected that because he's a possession running back. Um, just he's, you know, he just gets you a yard here, yard there, you know. Christian McCaffrey. I can see it, and I'll tell you why. 
I'm I'm throwing a joke about possession running backs like possession receiver <laughs> just because the guy's white. I'm joking. <laughs> guys top got guys uh-huh. a top three running back in the league. Top five, top three arguable. Top five, not you can't argue that. Yeah. Um, but they got to save Cam. They got to save Cam's yeah. shoulder. Yes. So those little, all this little, the little thing Cam doing normally keep it is going to twenty two. And I think, and 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 that division he's in is not the most stout division against the run. No. And I think he can make some noise, and he might end up winning his rushing title. Who you got? You didn't expect me to say Christian McCaffrey. I didn't. I know who you. Well, I know I know who you better have as a receiver, but who you got running the ball? Running the ball strictly yardage wise. Yardage wise, yeah. Attempts, rushing attempts, yeah. total rushing yards. Total rushing yards. I'm going to go out on a limb. I just did. <laughs> no, no. You went out on kind of a limb. On, on a guy he's, a top, he's a top three back. So? I'm going to go out on a limb. Possession back. And for all you Browns fans out there, I say Nick Chubb wins the rushing title this year. And And a hush falls over the crowd. Didn't it? Because I'm like, who can I get to do the show next week? Because this guy is fired. That's not a bad choice. Listen, but here's 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 my my defense of my pick. Baltimore Ravens, they're down this year. They lost a lot on defense. Okay. Cincinnati Bengals defense, are going to be, but they're going to be awful. But the defense against the run is not going to be terrible. But when your defense is on the field all game, you're going to get wore down. Yes, war of attrition. The Steelers are going to be the Steelers, but whenever the Steelers play at home against the Browns, they give up. Yeah, they they give up. They give up, if not a yeah. lot of points, a lot of yards. Yeah, so. Those are those are three teams and two, four, five games that I think Nick Chubb has the problem, a great chance of crushing it. Now, the problem with Nick Chubb is the the NFC West that that non conference schedule is for the AFC North. Is, you a rough schedule. It is and it isn't because the first game you have Tennessee, right? You have Tennessee. You have the Jets. The Rams is going to be tough. Baltimore, you have San Fran. We're See, at, it's at Baltimore. It's going to be tough. I mean, but they'll play at home in a way. Mm-hmm. But you have Seattle at home. It's still going to be tough. Seattle, Seattle, Seattle's Seattle just a de- gritty team. Seattle's defense does does not scare me. No, but they're just all. a gritty team, though. Just like Tennessee, they're gritty. But you have Denver. You have Buffalo, who Buffalo's you know, going to be good. They're going to be good. Yeah. Miami, eh, who knows? And then you have Arizona, Baltimore, and then you have the Bengals to round out like the last two out of the last four games that you have. You have both Bengals and you have the Ravens. I just I just see him and if the team and, is and, as, a, and if the team is as good on paper as it is it, it, and it's not going to be. And since we had a last show I did some research on it because I got tired of everybody calling me and texting me about the Browns. Mm-hmm. Baker's Mayfield's numbers was, you got to count every game you play. Let me preface it by saying that, but I'm going to tell you right now, the Bengals were god-awful. Seven touchdowns, no picks. Take that out, he is very, very average. Take his stats out against two teams, he's very average for rookie quarterback. And he was one of five against winning teams. The receiving core is ranked 19th. 19th. It just got a splash because they got the flashiest guy, Art Beckham Brown, Beckham Brown. Who want to be the flashiest? Doesn't Fair matter. enough. That is why they got that. Another thing, your head coach has never been a coordinator. He was quarterback coach. Now he's a head coach. Mm-hmm. And the most silent killer that got him, they don't have Greg Williams running that defense anymore. Very they true. are going to be out of the playoffs, which shouldn't shock anybody, but for all the hoopla they've gotten, I will say this. They with, ain't going to do what people think they're going to do. If you stick around for the weekly awards, Todd Kitchen or Freddie Kitchen. Yeah. What? Everybody's Todd. Today. Everybody Todd. <laughs> Mama named Todd. I'm calling Todd. <laughs> Freddie Kitchens is my douche of the week. We'll see if he can, if he can do what he should do with this roster. 
I don't know if he will. And I think that Greg Williams is, is going to hurt him more than anything else. I, th- I think so. I think so. Cause, cause if nothing else, Greg, Greg Williams is a great defensive. You don't have to like him as a person No, but I take him in pitch. We try to win football games. I wouldn't, I would never invite him over to my house to have drinks, dude, but man, football. if I was a head coach, that's the first call I make. He, he, he can coach football. That's it. I'm telling you. That's it. That's why I'm not swole. Well, but I, I, I like, and then this is one other reason I'm not crazy about that. Is because Cream Hunt come back week eight. It's going. It's going to cut his touches down. Not not if he's killing it. If he's killing it, it Cream Hunt sits. It'll be cut. It'll cut his touches down. I'm just saying, if he's killing it, Cream Hunt sits. That's true. That's true. As he so should. We, so we, so I went out. I didn't. I went out on a. I didn't go on a limb. I went with the pick nobody expects. I went. I went. You out, went out on a limb. I went out on the, that little branch. That that branch yeah. that you would use for the switch. Yeah, we'll catch you this when you is... fall. Yeah, we'll catch you when you fall. Yeah. But this has got to be fun. Oh, That's yeah. why I do it. No, I like I like your pick. Because I'll take Chubb and Fantasy. It's it's possible. Yeah. yeah. It's it's not probable, but it's possible. Mm, it's definitely possible. So we d- we did rushing title, passing title. I know who you better have. I went on a limb here again. See me checking my notes. I got Mike Evans from Buccaneers. You're talking receiving. Receiving. I thought you said receiving title. Passing title. Uh oh, I didn't do passing title. I went receiving title. That's fine. Passing title. Hell, I can sit here and think about that. It'll be Mahomes because all they're gonna do is chuck it around. And you said you said Mike Evans. Mike Evans will lead the league in receiving. I don't see it, man. The reason I see it. Is because the new coach of Bruce Arians was in Pittsburgh, and I know what they're going to do. They're going to chuck that bitch around, and I don't care who quarterbacking. And that boy good. I'm and not they are go- going to be behind. If this if this wasn't quote bold predictions, <laughs> I would just tell you Michael Thomas is the, <laughs> the the receiving leader and move on from there. Michael Thomas just got a lot of money though. He might he might take a step back. He doesn't he doesn't seem like that. I know what he seemed like. He, he well, seemed, I'm just saying. He seems gritty. But I, but I know he's also on a team that spread that ball around. Yep. Tampa Bay ain't spreading it around that much. No. And Bruce Arians, I seen him in Pittsburgh. They are going to put up yards. I mean, points they put up is between. I ain't got nothing to do with that. But they're going to put up yards. They just ain't going to win. They're going to be behind. And I'm telling you, they'll move the football. I just don't think they'll score. Mike Evans is going to have a matter of fact, what pick I got for mm-hmm. mark it down. It won't be Mike Evans. <laughs> mark it down. It will not be Mike Evans. You won't. Yeah. Mark it down. It will not be Mike Evans. I'm going on record right now and I will not pick Mike Evans at four. So <laughs> thanks for letting us know. I'm I appreciate that, you know? I appreciate that. Confident in my picks. Absolutely. Um, here's my bold prediction. Again, if this wasn't bull predictions, I would either have gone with uh, Michael Thomas or I would have gone with DeAndre Hopkins. And it, it, That's fair. I, I really looked at that. Because that's that one is probable. That one, Well, Mike Evans is probable now because of, the, because of the head coach. DeAndre Hopkins is probable number one because he's got no, the quarterback. No one can guard him. Yeah. He's it, got, I mean, even in double teams, they he, can't guard yeah, him. He's got the quarterback. He's got the offense. Like it's it's all the stars aligning right. Yeah, that, that's why I think what he I, is he is most in my mind most likely to win the receiving title. What I see holding him back is if they're in games, they love to run the ball. But what's his, what's, what's what I keep calling this coach Bradley is his name Bradley Bill, Bill Bradley <laughs> loves to run the ball, and you got a quarterback that you can run it with too. That's what they want to do. Yeah, they'll get him in the game, but once they get up, he out of the game. They just ain't gonna pour it on you. Yeah, you know, you get some teams like New England. They, 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 you get behind, that's your fault. They will pour it. On, they'll run the ball till they get ahead. Yes, and then it's just over. They'll blow your ass out. Texans is the opposite. They'll get up and just shut it down and hope the clock run out. <laughs> that's true, and it's Bill O'Brien and by the way. Yeah, I don't get that. I keep <laughs> who I keep calling him. Bill Bradley. Bill Bradley. <laughs> Beetle Bailey. What am I Beetle, calling him? Beetle, 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 Bailey? Beetle Bailey. I don't get damn man name. Uh, but anyway. But my, my out on a limb, 
bold prediction. For what? For receiving. I know who it better be. Who's that? You tell me, and I'll tell you if you got it right. Adam Thielen. Oh, no, that's not too bold. <laughs> I mean, I almost picked him. I really did Adam almost pick because for some reason no one can guard him because he's just a possession receiver. Yeah. So how come no one can guard him? Because apparently they go, they look at the sheet and they're like, yeah, I think we need to guard Stefan Diggs this week. Yeah, I, I just knew they put height and weight. I didn't know they put ethnicity on the, <laughs> in the program. I'm just sick of him downplaying him because he white. <laughs> See, that shit get on my nerves. I Why don't y'all not pick him in fantasy? I'll take him and light y'all up. Fair enough. But for you to be right on your season picks, you better hope it's Devontae Adams for Green Bay <laughs> because you high on the Packers. And when I went back and looked, because did I tell you I had some free time? You did. So when I went back and looked at this, I'm like, okay, the Packers do got a shot because that schedule, come on, this schedule tough, tough. Got to the Packers, I'm like, oh, oh, I got a shot. Schedule ain't no good. Mm-hmm. Huh. But Devontae Adams, Got to show up and show out. I mean, he will because he does. Yeah, and he's, and he's playing good. with Roger like a dude's not drop the ball. Exactly. Might as well be me throwing it to him. <laughs> exactly. No, not exactly. And then you said Patrick Mahomes. That's it. said for quarterback. That's a set like, 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 yeah. You know why I'm not going to choose Patrick Mahomes? Because he's on the cover of Madden and the Madden Jinx. curse. There you go. Yeah. He's going to have a down year. But I will say quarterback wise, I'm going to say it's Carson Wentz this year. Yeah, because like, well, who would have picked Ben last year? Yeah. So Carson Wentz is a great pick because no one would have picked Ben. But I'll tell you who I think it'll be: Jimmy Garoppolo. That is a bold pick. That's a bold pick. That's what we're looking for here on the Gas Up Face Podcast, <laughs> my friend. <laughs> Jimmy Garoppolo. Oh, you I'm, heard it here first. I'm counting on this bastard. I'm counting. I'm a kid. I'm a as, kick as his high as, ass. as high as I am on the Packers this year. I'm that high on the 40. You, I, and you might be higher on the 49ers. Dude, than that. And I looked at the schedule and I'm like, ooh, Lou. Ooh, ooh. They got a tough schedule, man. Hey, la- I'll give you their last six games. Wait, one, two, three, four. Yeah, last six games. Home against Green Bay at Baltimore, at New England. I'm sorry, at New Orleans. Home against Atlanta, home against the Rams, at Seattle. I was like, oh, boy. So I looked at the first five. Home against or at Tampa, at Cincinnati, home against Pittsburgh, home against Cleveland, at the Rams. I'm like they better be three and two. Yeah. Or I'm done. And they they better be four and one. Really four and one. But I'm I'm like I'm done. If they if they uh, if they want to start four and one, I'm I'm done. We'll see. Because the uh, <laughs> it ain't gonna take long either. Any 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 surprise playoff. Predictions. Let me get my notes up. <laughs> in the AFC, I basically have the Ravens falling out of the playoffs because they lost too much defense. I got the Texans not making it this year because they're too injury prone, injury prone. And I'm replacing them with the Steelers and the Bills. I got the Chiefs as a one, New England as a two, simply because the Chiefs have to have it. New England don't really care. They prefer to have it. I got the Steelers as a three seed because – New England will beat them in week one, come to a tiebreaker. Colts four, Chargers five, Bills six. Because I think the Bills will go to Cleveland and win that game. AFC. God, you really did have a lot of time this week. Yeah, I had a lot of time. I just wrote it down. I, <laughs> I just wrote it down. You didn't think I remembered it. All right. That's AFC. I got the NFC right here, too. Yeah. It took me a little longer. As far as the AFC goes... New England again until anybody till somebody, till somebody beat them until somebody knocks them out. They're they're going to I I think they're going to get the the two seed. I'm going to give the one seed to Kansas City because I am as again as high like, as I am on 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 the Packers. I am very high on the Chiefs this year, so I'll give that one to Kansas City. I don't think the Chargers make the playoffs this year. I can see that. I don't see them making the playoffs. I think the Texans will run away with the South. Over um, the Colts? Over the Colts. Ooh. But I think the Colts make it. And then the last two teams I'd have to give to Pittsburgh and maybe it's either Cleveland or Buffalo. It's the winner of that game. Yep. Been saying it for months. That's it. That's it. But in the NFC, who do you got in the NFC? I got the Saints one, Eagles two, 
Rams three, Bears four, Packers five, Niners six. Cowboys are out. That's the shocker there. Seattle's out. Here's the other bold prediction. I have the Cowboys out too, but I don't know if you have them out for this reason. But my prediction is Zeke sits out the entire season and the same thing that happened to Le'Veon Bell happens to him this year. The reason that that won't happen is because he'll lose a year towards his retirement. Bell, that wasn't going to happen because he was under the franchise tag. Yes. If Zeke sits out, he loses that year, and the Cowboys retain his rights for at least three more years. So it does him no good to sit out. He has to come and play. Now if he comes and plays and pulls a hammy, it's different. So let's just say you're saying that he's going to pull a hammy. He's I can agree he's with not, that. He's not going to play this year. I, he's just not going to uh, play. But he we'll, might, we'll he just might, say he's going to he pull might, a hammy, though. He might play for a series. Ow, ow. But he pulled his hammy. In, in all reality, he's not playing this year. No, he pulled a hammy. So if you're looking at drafting him in fantasy, I'd ixnay on that draft pick. So let's see here. Who got the one pick? Corey? Yep. He's taking Barkley. You're taking. Let's see. Who's out there? Eric, that's it. Ain't no more good players left. No more good players. I'm gonna, t- I'm gonna take your rushing leader. That's who I'm gonna take. You I'm gonna taking, say it right now. You ain't taking Christian McCaffrey. Number two. You. No, you're I'm not. taking the possession running back. <laughs> 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 let's see. I'll pull it up right now. You're taking you're taking probably Gurley because I just told you his knee's good. No. You while you look at that, I'll tell you mine. I got the Saints. I got the Rams. I got the Packers, who are going to be the three. Woo! Now, I'm high on the Packers. Yeah, you are. But they're going to be the three. I have the Eagles winning the East. And then I have... Mm-hmm. See, here's, here was... Here was I want to see. Here was the, here was the difficult Who's your wild card? Thing. My wild cards because the 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 Seahawks aren't going to make it. No. The Cardinals aren't going to make it. The Bucks aren't going to make it. The Panthers, I think, are going to be an eight and eight football team this year. Um, and then you have it's basically between the Niners, the Vikings, and, the, and the Bears, and the Cowboys in that mix for two spots. And I say the Bears take the last spot. I say they take the six. Okay. And I think, I think the Niners take the five. So we both got the Niners in. Yeah. See, but when I look. Or, or you can reverse it. Yeah, just getting in the playoffs yep. is in the playoffs. This is why I, when I looked at Green Bay, I changed my tune on them. First, I'll give you first five games. At Chicago, home against Minnesota and Denver. Oh, you, and you, Philly. You're talking to me like I haven't seen the schedule. Yeah, we, we know you have. I'm talking to the people. <laughs> then at Dallas. That makes me a little nervous. That's why I initially counted them out. But then I got to the end, and I was thinking, their last six games at San Fran, at the Giants, Washington, Chicago, mm-hmm. at Minnesota, at Detroit. I'm just telling how you. How can they not get in? That's exactly. Okay. That's, that's how I look at it. But that's, that's all I got. And then, you know, I'm, I'm rooting for, and, and I think I said it before, uh, I'm rooting for that, that Packers Chiefs. Super Bowl flashback to what Super Bowl one or two? One and one one and two or one and three. Yeah. One and two. Yeah, the first two. Yep. Can't believe the Steelers weren't in those, but whatever. Dude, that's when they were wearing the Bumblebee uniforms and they yeah. couldn't get out of their own way. <laughs> hey, play the clown music. <laughs> they showed up at one of them with three foot clown cars and everybody got out. But yeah, that's that's all I got. Do you have anything else for the for the football spectacular? No, that's it. <laughs> that is it. All right. Well, for Lou Willard, I'm Armando. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for watching and enjoying or listening and enjoying. And uh, we'll see you some other time soon. 